YouTube show. When you oh, move wow. to a new place, tip number one, make friends with your neighbors. They'll tell you everything you need to know mm -hmm. about your land. Right. And just drive around and walk around and see what's thriving. You know, I, that's what I've been doing here is like, oh, that grows really well. You know, Vitex, the chase tree that blooms really late, the purple mm -hmm. one. Um, that, you know, I see that around a lot. I'm like, well, that'd be good to have. And um, the house is really old. It's uh, two parts. It's two buildings put together. And the first, the front part of the house is a full cape from, we're quite, not, we're not quite sure yet. We're doing, we're trying to get research with the historical society. We haven't really dove deep, but somewhere between 1750 and 1780 is the first part of the, the front part of the house. And the back part of the house is 1866 and seems to be part of a life-saving station on the Cape. And they wow. both were moved here in the 1930s is what we're told by someone. And we're not sure who, and we're trying to figure all that out, but whoever did it did plant some stuff that is still here. That is, I feel very lucky to have. And, and it was really great to move here in the kind of dead of late winter and watch the spring emerge because I didn't know what would pop up. I knew I had lilacs, but I didn't know how well they'd bloom and I knew they were overgrown. And um, I love that the person who put the house here put lilacs at each corner. So that feels important to keep, you know, that that intention that that person wanted to ground the house with lilacs, I, I approve of that. So mm -hmm. um, I just tried to rejuvenate them this year. They were all kind of, you know, overgrown. So I tried to cut half of them back so I can get them a bit rejuvenated and then still keep some flowers for next year. And um, and they put a privet hedge, kind of a room with a privet hedge, but that's all kind of, you know, overgrown. So we're trying to rejuvenate that by cutting it back and letting it grow back thick, more thickly. And then the other thing I'm really excited about right outside this window is uh, Lily of the Valley. I've never, I've always planted it. I've never been around long enough for it to, you know, people say it's a thug and it spreads, but I don't, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. And it loves, seems to love sandy soil. And is, I can tell you, it's very drought tolerant because it's still green, even though we had, we've had drought and hot weather. And so having that much lily of the valley is really nice too. So. Oh my God. Um, so fragrant. Yeah. Yeah. So, I love it. So what has your kind of vision and approach been? I mean, you've shared a little bit of insight into that of, okay, I've bought this house there's history here in the garden, in the house. I want to honor it. Do you leave it for a year and watch the sun move and kind of see what spots are? And just, are you just trying to kind of revitalize what's existing? Are you actively trying to add to it? Like for kind of first time home buyers, landscapers, like how would you suggest, it could feel very overwhelming. Um, how would you suggest kind of that approach? It depends on what kind of person you are. I'm I'm impatient, but I'm also not a person who wants it to be perfect immediately. Mm -hmm. um, I'm impatient in the sense that I want to get gardening as soon as possible. And that's what I did. Um, but this whole time, because of COVID, I've never known when I was leaving this place. So I arrived here in March, and then the original return to work date was kind of vague. Then it was June. Then it got moved to September and then Delta and now it's moved to October. So it's just been this moving target of when I'll be here and when I won't be here. Mm -hmm. So when I got here, it really, there's not a lot to, there's not a lot to preserve other than I'd say the four lilacs. We're keeping the priv privet hedge, even though maybe, maybe it doesn't work because it's under a big tree. So we're trying to figure out if the shade is going to let it be successful. Um, and the rest of it is adaptable, but I don't want to do any permanent moves until I know that I can be here to tend to it. Mm -hmm. So the kind of the good news about having to be so uncertain with the pandemic is, is that I've been able to tell myself, okay, you don't need to worry about doing anything permanent. Don't rush and just live with this place and see what happens for this period of time and do what you want to do to actively have the act of gardening. But my key on that was make it impermanent. So I tried to do three experiments. So I've had three experiments here I've been working on okay. that are impermanent experiments, meaning I love that. they're things that can change if I need them to. Mm -hmm. um, so Joe, should I tell you what the three are? Yes, please, please. <laughs> yeah, please. Like, no, I'm not interested. Um, we're good, right we don't want to know. Maybe later, <laughs> sounds, sounds a little boring. Um, anyway, the three experiments are um, the the property has a chain link fence around what was a dog run because the previous owner bred boxers. 
professionally. I think she even went oh, to wow. Westminster. And stuff. So she had like maybe seven boxers back there. So it's this kind of, you know, ugly area with a lot of gravel and a chain link fence. So ultimately the chain link fence is going to go replaced by, I'm not sure what yet, but the, we left the chain link fence up right now just for rabbits and stuff. And then what I thought we'd do is I was like, I love a gravel garden and here we are next to the ocean. Um, you know, some days I can hear the bay waves mm -hmm. and some days I can hear the ocean waves. So we're at the narrow, you know, very narrow part of the Cape. And so it's really nice to honor that the ocean's right here. So I don't want to make a garden that isn't reflective of the place that we're in, which is mm -hmm. sandy, maritime, um, needs to put up with nor'easters but still has, you know, has warmth in the summer, has cold, wet springs and long, warm falls. <laughs>